Hi and welcome to Recap Nation. Today, we are going to recap a 2020 movie called Soul. So, sit back and enjoy. A black music teacher named Joe Gardner was so passionate about music and was working as a part-time music teacher in a school. So it happened that, that day, he was instructing his students on music, but the children seemed to be uninterested and untalented, except for a young girl named Connie. She played her solo well, but at the end she felt embarrassed by her classmates because they started laughing at her. Seeing their low interest and passion for music, he followed up with an emotional speech about how he first fell in love with jazz music. But unfortunately, the students seemed unimpressed. Suddenly, the school principal named Arroyo came to the door and called for his attention. When he went out, she greeted him with a good news letter in an envelope, telling him that he had been promoted from being a part-time teacher to a full-time band teacher. Joe was thankful, but deep inside, he was not. He was thoughtful and had higher ambitions. After school, he went to his mother, Libba, who is a seamstress, to tell her about the promotion. She was so happy about the news that she didn't ask for his opinion and forced him to say yes. Suddenly, Joe then gets a phone call from a former student named Curly, who happens to be working in the band of a famous jazz musician in town named Dorothea Williams, whom Joe admires. Curly told him that their band pianist had quit and there was an opening for a piano player if he was interested. Upon hearing this, Joe was extremely happy and showed up immediately. When he entered the rehearsal room, Dorothea belittled him, thinking he couldn't offer anything after knowing that he was just a middle school teacher. But since she had no pianist, she gave him a chance for a test. Immediately, Dorothea and her crew began playing without telling Joe the song or the chord to play. At first, he was a little bit shaky, but Joe began to observe the notes they were playing and began to replicate the chord on the piano. Finally, he was given time for a solo. Joe gave himself completely over and stepped out of the outside world for a few seconds. After the rehearsal, Dorothea was so impressed by his skills that she told Joe to show up for a sound check later that night at 7 o'clock. Joe was extremely happy about his achievement, and the feeling overwhelmed him to the point that he did not see where he was going and ended up falling down a manhole. When Joe opened his eyes, he discovered that he was in another form and had fallen down a dark staircase, heading toward a bright light. As he looked around, he saw some people and ran towards them to inquire what the place was. The people informed him that they were no longer alive and that they were headed to the great beyond now that their time on earth was done. Joe was horrified by the news and refused to accept his death, saying he couldn't miss Dorothea's show. So he began to walk in the opposite direction, but as he discovered that the light was pulling the approaching souls, he began running down the staircase. However, more and more souls started coming up. He climbed on the stools and eventually pushed himself through the wall surrounding the stairs. He broke into several realms and finally fell into a realm full of blue grass. When he opened his eyes, he found out that he was surrounded by thousands of souls and tried to hide. But the little souls wanted to play with him. At that moment, he met a counselor who was responsible for taking care of the little souls. The man explained to him that he was in a realm called the Great Before, where unborn spirits were prepared for human life. He also went further to explain that anyone taking care of the souls in that realm is called Jerry. Some moments later, the man picked him up for a tour to show him around. As the man was showing him around, he showed him a portal and explained that the portal leads to Earth, where many souls who have completed their personality tests and are ready can jump down to take them to their Earth bodies. Upon hearing about the portal, Joe dropped everything and went immediately to the mouth of the portal, secretly. When Joe arrived at the portal, he saw thousands of souls jumping. So, he attempted to jump down too, but unfortunately for him, he kept getting sent back to the great before. In the midst of his confusion, another Jerry showed up and told him that since he couldn't go to Earth, maybe he was a mentor and asked him to pick a badge for the mentor class. Joe didn't show interest in becoming a mentor, but the man opened a picture of the great beyond and told him that if he didn't want to go to the great beyond, he could take a position as a mentor to other souls so that they could earn their Earth pass and gain a life. Out of fear and not wanting to go to the great beyond, Joe grabbed a mentor badge and headed off to mentor training. Meanwhile, a soul coward named Terry, who stood at the passage to the great beyond, noticed that one soul was missing. She went to the great before to report to Jerry what had happened. To solve the problem, the cow removed to a large register room and began checking the files one by one. In the mentor class, where young souls are prepared to develop their personalities before getting the earth pass, the instructor informs them that every child has a unique personality, and they need to firm their personality to find out what they like. After performing some tests, there was a gap left to fill. The responsibilities of a mentor are to help the souls discover their spark, which will, in turn, change their badge to an Earth Pass to get to their Earth bodies. 
After the training, Jerry said it's time to start matching mentors with their soulmates. He starts by calling Dr. Borginson. Everyone was clapping, including Joe, until he realized that the badge he stole was the name of the doctor, and he had to go on stage to maintain his cover. Jerry called the number 22 a rebellious soul who has gone through many famous mentors including Abraham Lincoln, Muhammad Ali, Copernicus, Mother Teresa, and Sinvra, but has never found a desire to get a life past to Earth. Jerry drops 22 on Joe's face and opens a portal for them. 22 follows Joe through the life of the doctor he pretends to be. 22 told him she doesn't want to get a pass to Earth. She wants to stay free in the great before. Joe told her that he was not Dr. Borginson. 22 shows Joe that she can pull up images of his own life. While seeing flashbacks, Joe feels as though his whole life was full of failures. He accomplished nothing in his life, and this is why he feels he has to get back to his body and make something of himself. He asked 22 to give him her badge so he can return to his body, but 22 told him that the badge is tied to her soul, and she can't give it out until it's activated and converted to an earth pass. The two then resolve to get 22's earth pass activated so that she can give it to Joe for him to return to earth, and so she can become a free spirit that can stay in the world of spirits forever. To do this, Joe needs to help 22 find the spark that will activate the pass. He takes her to the world of everything, which has everything in the world for souls to experience to discover their spark. Joe tries everything he can, like food, activities, and painting, to see if it will inspire 22, but nothing impresses her. Joe leaves the hall disappointed. Jerry shows up and tells Joe that time is up and he needs to go back to the great beyond. 22, thinking about their agreement with Joe, begs Jerry to give them more time to try some stuff. 22 takes Joe to a secret portal and tells him that it is a space between the physical and the spiritual, a place where people who are still alive can access it. 22 explains that it's a place people go when they are into something and feel like they are in another place. Joe said this must be the place he arrived during his test with Dorothea. As they were talking, a dark creature went after them, as they reached the end of the road and were about to be crushed. The monster was captured by a sheep, and a guy named Moonwind, a soul that lives as a man on earth and works as a sight whirler, came out of the sheep with his friends and told them that these were lost souls, the kind of souls who never found a purpose and became consumed with negative thoughts. Moonwind told them that his work is to guide lost souls to their bodies. His friends performed a ritual on the creature and brought him back to normal. They also opened a portal to send him back to his earthly body. Joe was so excited upon seeing this, but when Joe made a circle, instead of opening a portal to his body, it opened a portal to the great beyond. Joe was terrified and asked Moon Wind to help him. Finally, Moon Wind was able to help Joe reach his body, which was lying in a coma in the hospital. As Joe prepared to jump back in, he accidentally pulled 22 down with him, and they both fell down the soul hole. When Joe opened his eyes, he realized he had jumped into a cat, and 22 had jumped into his body. When the doctors arrived, Joe tried to explain what had happened, but they couldn't understand him because he was just a cat. When the doctors saw the communication between Joe and the cat, they thought it was a side effect of the medication and put him under observation. Finally, they both agreed to escape from the hospital to find the human version of Moonwind. On their way out, since she had never controlled a body before, 22 found it difficult to walk, but they finally got out of the hospital. 22 was bombarded by life and people as they stepped outside. She hid until Joe went to swipe a slice of pizza and gave it to her, which was her first taste of food. 22 decided that she loved pizza. Later that day, they eventually found Moonwind at his job. They explained to him what had happened, and Moonwind told them there was a way and asked them to meet at a specific location at 6.30 later that day for Joe to return to his body. While trying to get home, they stopped a taxi, and as they were about to enter, Joe was horrified to see Dorothea and Curly coming out of the taxi. They quickly jumped inside the cab and made it back home before anything else happened. On reaching home, Joe got a call from Curly saying that Dorothea freaked out upon seeing him and gave the gig to another guy. But yet, Curly asked him to show up anyway, because he thinks he still has a chance to redeem himself if he shows up to the gig anyway, but he was to look presentable. Joe asked 22 to help him. They were then interrupted, when Connie went to Joe's apartment to tell him she wanted to quit the band. 22, speaking as Joe, talked to her on a level she could understand, and although she seemed to encourage Connie to quit, the girl changed her mind after playing a trombone piece that she had been working on. 22 felt surprised at having been able to influence someone else. Joe was helping 22 get ready by cutting the hair on his own head. He slipped and cut down the middle of his hair before the electric razor broke. Joe freaked out and then told 22 to go to his local barber, named Deezy. 
There, they met a man named Paul, who seemed to be Joe's rival. He made negative comments toward Joe. 22 got into a conversation and talked to Deezy and the other clients about her thoughts on life and how far it had taken her to this point. Everyone is impressed by her thoughts, and she even manages to zing Paul when he makes another snobbish comment. After the cut, 22 goes to let Paul know there are no hard feelings. Terry then appears in the great before and tells Jerry that Joe was the lost soul she was looking for. She decides to return to Earth to snag his soul. When Terry sees 22 and Joe, she accidentally snags Paul, returns his soul to his body, but still makes him uncomfortable by trying to explain herself. As they journey to see Dorothea, 22 is overwhelmed by her newfound life and is playing with almost everything she sees until she rips Joe's pants. With no time to find a tailor, Joe realizes the only person who can fix them is his mom, Libba, who will not be happy to learn that he is taking a gig. When he gets to the shop, he finds out from Libba's co-workers that she already knows about the gig. Joe and 20 to go to speak to her, which leads to Joe speaking his heart and 20 to repeating his words. Libba never supported Joe in his ambitions. After a heartfelt discussion, Libba says she has always supported Joe, even if she thought his dreams were out of reach. She decides to support the gig, and she gives Joe his father's old suit. So, Joe and 22 stop by to see Moon Wind so he can return Joe to his body. But 22 has realized that she has enjoyed life in the short time that she has had a body. Even the negative experiences made her feel more exhilarated than she had ever felt. When Moon Wind arrives, he calls out for both of them so they can start the ritual. But 22 refuses to give up Joe's body. She picks a race, and Joe chases her down into the subway. Suddenly, they fall into Terry's traps. He catches them and sends them back to the great before. Joe, seeing his body on the floor, tries to enter but is pulled back. The Jerrys are surprised to see that after thousands of years, 22 has finally gotten her earth pass, since she found her spark. But Joe argues that it doesn't count because she did all that through his body. 22 gets angry and decides to throw the pass at Joe, who retreats. When he finds out that she left, Joe takes the pass and makes it back to his body. Finally, Joe goes to Dorothea's show, and despite her apprehension toward him, she gives him another chance, and Joe manages to put on a stunning performance with the band. When Dorothea offers him a chance to go on tour with them, Joe admits that he doesn't feel the way he expected to feel, after all that. She leaves him with some parting words of advice for him to reflect on. When Joe returns to his apartment feeling bad about what happened with 22, as he plays music to himself, he returns to the zone and reunites with Moonwind. He helps Joe get back to the great before, only to find that 22 has quickly turned into a monstrous lost soul. When they see her and try to catch her, she sinks their ship. Joe tries to reach out to her. After a brief chase, he enters, only to be assaulted by her cloud of negativity. He finds 22 crying alone as she remembers all her past mentors, including Joe, telling her that she will never find her purpose. After several confrontations, Joe takes the leaf that 22 had been mesmerized by when she was in his body, as it was a small but memorable thing for her that drove her desire to live. The darkness disappears from around her. Joe gives her her badge back. He leads her through the portal and goes as far as he can with her as they say goodbye so that she can finally have her own body. Joe then prepares to head to the great beyond until Jerry stops him and says that all the Jerrys were impressed with his actions and the fact that he was the one who got 22 to want to live. They have decided to allow Joe to return to his body, and they will even keep it a secret from Terry by not letting her know the count is off and making her believe it's fine. Joe then promises to really live his life to the fullest. What did you think of this movie? Comment below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos like this.